Welcome to the Malt Miller YouTube channel, home brewers. In this video, we are taking a close look at the Oxybar kegs from Kegland. So Martin, a little while ago, we introduced the eight litre Oxybar kegs from Kegland to our range. You've been using them, how you've been finding it? Mate, I think they're an absolute blinding product. You know, I've been kegging for a while. I use traditional corny kegs. I went for these just because of their ease of use, transportability, you know, the compact size of them. Yeah. You know, and I might do a batch that's more than 19 litres, so I need something else to put things in. So I got a couple of the eights and so did everybody else. They absolutely flew out. Yeah, the yeah, they did, yeah. So yes, you've been waxing lyrical about these and how you've enjoyed using them for beer, which you've just mentioned, but also you've been using it for a few other uses as well, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I love using these for cleaning my lines. You know, you can fill it with purple line cleaner, fill it with Chem Clean, obviously not too hot because it's pet. Yeah. Or you can use Enzy Brew 10, which can be done at a lower temperature. Yeah, and then like you say, flush it through your lines, through your taps, Fill it then with some sanitizer to flush through again afterwards. Yeah. And the joy of this is it's so light and easy to use, so multifunctional. Yeah, and actually you've been using them to take away with you full of <laughs> yeah. beer, haven't you? Yeah, you go to a friend's house, going away for the weekend, take that. Remember to take your disconnects though. Yeah, remember to take your disconnects. Yeah, yeah, I've had a similar incident. But, you know, I forgot the disconnect, but I just basically depressurized it and poured it out like a big pot bottle. Yeah, and you know, it is a very familiar format for people, isn't it? Because it does look like a giant eight litre, you know, fizzy drinks bottle, but there are some key features about this that make it different, right? Which I think you're absolutely in love with. First and foremost is kind of the oxygen protection and the light strike protection that's built into these. Yeah, I mean, these are not just a normal pet. They're not like the pet fermenters. They're obviously brown, so it protects against UV and skunking of the beer. Yeah, like a brown glass bottle would. Yeah, but again, if you watch the video from Key, he talks about how they've got a special layer within there, which actually helps decrease oxygen ingress. So a normal pet, you'll get about a month of storage, which is perfectly fine for a fermenter. You're not gonna leave beer in there for more than a month. These will do three times that. So you can store your beer safely without compromising the quality of the beer for three months in these. Right, and that is a big deal because most home brewers, you're gonna get through a keg in three months, certainly of an eight litre size. So it's great to know that that protection is in there, right? But what we're really excited about is that we've now brought in a couple of the newer sizes of these from Kegland and there's one that I really want to talk about so I'm going to grab it. Bosh! The small ones! I love these. I mean look at that for size and compactness. You know, you slip that in your rucksack, have a little tap coming out. Just walk around and give all your mates a beer. I at know. The party. It's awesome, right? And again, if you're using it as like a, a vessel for cleaning solution, that's the perfect size because you can stick four litres of you know cleaner in there. That's more than enough to clean your lines. And again, with sanitizer and just having that on hand where your kegerator or keyser is, yeah. so that's a really nice size, isn't it? Yeah, but James, it doesn't stop there. It's not just the cute new little ones we got. We've also got these big boys as well. Wow. 20 litres. <laughs> 20 litres in exactly the same format, but there are some key differences, right? So I think we should probably just clear the table so we can talk specifically about those chunky 20 litre ones. There we go. So we've got rid of the smaller ones. We've already talked about the 8 litre one in another video, which I'll put a link to up here, where we cover loads of different kegging options. And the 4 litre one just is an awesome, transportable, small size one. So if you go into a party, you can take four litres of your lovely homebrew with you. Or if you go into a beer festival that's pouring homebrew, you can take some of that with you as well, right? But we really want to dive into these big format 20 litre ones because they're really new in from Kegland and are very exciting. Martin, talk us through it. Okay, James, there's a number of different features on here which are slightly different to the smaller. You know, obviously the first one, let's start at the top, you've got the handles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these handles are here for a couple of reasons, not just for lifting the keg and transporting it around. You know, you can stack them. You know, they sit within the handles, okay? Okay, right, so if you're storing them in the brewery, right, you've got a really good option to take up less space. Yeah, handle as well as being the carrying tool also protects the posts. 
So you'll notice that I've actually built in and covered. That's what allows us to stack it. Okay, yeah, nice. And if you've got disconnects on there and line and stuff, you've got this nice little sort of cutaway in the handles, which means that that can come out, but you still add in that protection. Yeah. The handle is also built into the head unit. Okay. okay. The reason for that is because if you could imagine trying to unscrew this on its own inside the handle, it's going to be tricky. So all you do is depressurize it and then you just turn the handle and that will unthread the head unit. Right, okay, that's a really nice feature. So that all comes off in one go. All in one piece. And that's gonna make it far easier when you're doing transfer into the keg, if you're not doing it under pressure. Um, and also when it comes to cleaning as well, because you can take that off and kind of whatever your cleaning option is, it might be that you're using like a bucket blaster, you know, or a keg washer of some sort. It's just gonna make it that little bit easier. Yeah, it just works as the tool to do the leverage and actually get a really good seal on it. Nice. So what are the features are built into the head unit because again it is slightly different to the eight and fours because the eight and fours are standard just come with a screw top and then you can buy the tapping head kit that uh, fits onto it that allows you to add the disconnect yeah so we sell them on their own we also sell them with the tapping head kit you know in different packages that people might want to buy them in with this it comes as a single keg with the head unit in post out post green prv now the green PRV is different to the one that's on the eights and the fours because you get the red PRV on there. Yep. So this is like 65 PSI, 4.5 bar. Wow, okay, so that's quite a bit. Yeah. So James, then also if we look inside again, you do get similar features at, in the fact that you've got the floating dip tube and the filter cage on the end. Okay. Okay. And that is the same floating dip tube mechanism as you would find on the Firmzilla, not the one that comes with the smaller ones. It's got the slightly more rigid length of hose, right? Correct, yes. Just like the fermenter. Because you can use these as a fermenter, but we'll come on to that in a little bit more detail shortly. Okay, so as we go down the body then of the large 20 litre oxy bars, so we've got that same light protection from the PET being in brown. Yep. We've got that uni uh, barrier that's built into yep. it as well to prevent from oxygen ingress. Yep. And then what about at the bottom? Then at the bottom, you've got the base or the chime as Key calls it. You know, and the purpose of this is it's a bigger keg. You know, plastic can be pierced, it can burst. So putting this base on the bottom, you know, keeps it steady, keeps it stable. Yeah. Helps protect the bottom of the keg. Right. Okay. Nice. So if you're moving it around, putting it down, you, you're at less risk of piercing it, right? Yeah. And let's not forget, it's also what helps make it stack. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Nice. Excellent. So what other features or things are you excited about with this particular size? Because it is, you know, it's, it's considerably bigger. Look, so far we've talked about this from our perspective. You know, we've been kegging for a while. So for us, it's just another great alternative to the kegs. We've got the great corny kegs. But if you're a home brewer who's not started kegging yet, this is a great introduction because there's also a price saving to be made on these versus stainless steel kegs. Yeah, I mean, you know, stainless steel will last your lifetime, right? Yeah but there is maintenance that needs to be done on a stainless steel keg. There's maintenance that would need to be done on this, but as an entry into kegging, it's an awesome solution, right? Yeah. And I think one thing to note on, on like dimensions, these are, these are a bit wider than a corny keg, one of the tall AEB style corny kegs, but they're similar in dimension to the reconditioned kegs that are a bit shorter and wider. So if you're thinking about how many kegs you might be able to get into your kegerator or keezer using these, kind of bear that in mind, right? Yeah. Because uh, some fridges you'll be able to get three tall stainless steel kegs in, some you'll be able to get two of the shorter stubbier ones. When you're planning out how you're going to set your kegerator or keezer up, try and think of this as similar in dimension to the uh, the shorter reconditioned kegs. Yeah, I mean, we can go through all of the dimensions of the full range shortly, um, and we will also put it down below on the video, so you can refer to that, and they're also on the product page. Yeah, nice. Now, James, we say they're a 20 litre keg, right? But let's just think for a minute, like any keg, 20 litres is to the brim on yep. this, you know, a 19 litre keg is 19 litres to the brim. So really usable space, you're going to do about 19 and a half litres in this because you need that little bit of head space. So the CO2, if you're carbonating in there, absorbs. Yeah, because you need a bit of head pressure to actually allow CO2 to get in. And if that head pressure is reduced or non-existent, there's nowhere for the CO2 to go. Exactly. So your regulator will be putting very little 
carbon dioxide actually into the keg. Um, so yeah, it's really nice so that it is 20 litres, so you can get 19 litres of finished beer in here, because in most cases, when you're brewing a batch that's say 23 litres, if it's got a lot of hops in there, or if you've got dead space in your fermenter, you're gonna end up with about 19 litres finished. So being able to get all of that into this keg is an awesome feature. Yeah, and you know, if you're doing a 23 litre batch and you're getting all of it, Use one of these and use a four. Yeah, 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 great. Combine the family yeah. together. Yeah, have a few different options. If you're brewing like bigger batches, so say you're brewing on like a, a G40 from Grainfather or a larger brewing system, having a couple so that you can configure your uh, packaging solution based on the amount of finished beer you've got, that's a really nice touch. Right, so let's jump back up to the head, Martin, and just touch a little bit more on how this is all configured. Because as with all of these products from Kegland, the posts can be unscrewed as can the PRV, right? Yeah. So you said it's shipped with a PRV that's rated to what? So this one is rated to 65 or 4.5 bar. Yeah. Which is different to what you get supplied with the head unit for the fours and the eights. Okay. The other nice thing about this is, you know, it comes with the post attached, it's all pre-built. The PRV is there as a PRV. It's not as a secondary kind of way to control your fermentation if you're choosing to use this as a fermenter. Yeah, you can change the PRV down though. If yes, you, you can. To. It's very easy to unscrew. You just literally take it out, you know, and you could put the red one in like you get with the smaller fours and eights on their tapping head, or there is a gray one which higher. Yeah, okay. And then how about um, using it as a fermenter? So if we were gonna use this as a fermenter, now all pressure fermenters, it's really important that the, you have some form of secondary ventilation uh, out of yeah. the system. So we've obviously got the PRV, it's important to keep that clean because if it gets clogged up with yeast or with hops, that could cause a safety issue. Yeah, it's not gonna work. No, but what else could we do if we were fermenting in this? Right, so yes, you can ferment in there, but there are a few things to think about. You know, these are designed as kegs, so you're paying for the extra feature, the barrier, the colour, you know. A pet fermenter is designed as a pet fermenter. You can see exactly the, what's going on, the flocculation of the yeast in there. Then the other thing to consider is the opening. The opening on this is really small. You're never going to get a hand in there to scrub that crowd enough. Yeah, okay. You know, it's like, it is limiting you in certain ways, but it's also giving you the advantages for serving. So, yes, you can use it, but when the separate products which are designed specifically for that use, really give them a consideration instead maybe? Yeah, I mean, we're in love with the Firmzilla. We've used it loads and we've actually got a load of videos on that, which I'll put some links up to up here. But the, the big benefit that you've touched on there is the ability to get inside and clean the Krausen off really easily, get cleaner in and out of it really easily. But if you did choose to use this as a fermenter, it's worth noting, isn't it, that whilst it's a 20 litre vessel, yeah. Actually, you need headspace, don't you? You're going to need headspace in there, and you know, you're going to have to think about crowds because you don't want it coming up and gunging up your PRV, etc. And you're also going to need to use it with a spunding valve. Yeah, so, so like the Kegland Red Disconnect correct, uh, spunding yeah. valve, yeah. Fermentation wise, though, I wouldn't go anything more than 15, 15 and a half litres in there. So you're giving yourself that space for the yeast to do what it needs to do. Yeah, I mean, it might be a nice thing to do if you've got some specific stuff that you're aging. You know, if you want to do some like pseudo barrel aging with a product, you know, you've you've maybe got some oak chips or some oak chunks or spirals. You want to add those to the beer and then leave it for a few months and be a really nice solution for that, right? Yeah. Because you've got that oxygen protection. Or indeed, if you've got some kind of wild mixed fermentation projects you're working on as well being able to age it in something like this yeah i think it's just using a little bit of common sense and thinking about what type of beer you're making how long is it going to be in there what's going to work best yeah when we cut when we talk about cleaning right something you said earlier was actually because of the way these are designed you can invert them and actually use like the bucket blaster from kegland to, yes. to clean them really easily so because it's a really nice smooth finish on the inside if you're using a cleaner like nz brew to just have that kind of cip sheeting kind of cleaning uh method going on you can clean it that way right yeah you can but you can also do it the manual way you know fill it with the liquid shake it around turn it upside down it isn't going to leak it even upside down you can even then when it's upside down pull that prv to get the last of the liquid out 
to make sure it's fully drained. Yeah, nice. Just make sure that you clean the PRV out correctly if there's any gunk in there. Yeah, cool, okay. Well look, I'm really excited about getting hands on and playing around with these. Is there any other information we wanna pass on to anybody watching this video before we go and start experimenting? James, I think the only thing left to do is kind of go through the, you know, the little bit that's kind of a little bit boring, but what people wanna know. Yeah. You know? Let's walk through the range and talk about the dimensions of all three vessels in all three sizes. So we've got them all on the table, Martin. Take us through the vital statistics. Right, let's start with the four litre. It is 155 millimetres wide, 325 high, with no tapping head. With the tapping head on, it's 354 millimetres tall. Eight litre, you know, supplied without the tapping head. This is 155 millimetres wide, exactly the same as the four, 520 high. Okay with the tapping head on, 549. Right, so if you think, it doesn't actually add a huge amount, the, the tapping head. No, it's 29 millimeters, it's really flat. When you look at it, it's really flat and it's designed so that the posts are sticking out rather than up. Yeah. Okay, then the 20 litre, the big boy, this one is 235 millimeters wide and then 640 high. And that includes the whole handle, the whole. Yeah, because there is no additional height there exactly. because it's all built in. Yeah. Well, look, everybody, that is kind of a really good overview of the full range of Oxybar kegs that we've got now. I think that they're an amazing option if you are new to kegging, right? If you're thinking about getting into kegging, if you're building a kegerator, or definitely if you're building a keezer, right? Because they're just that bit lighter to get in and out of a keezer. I'm really excited to start playing around with them. How are you, Martin? What are you thinking? Mate, I, I've already said to you, and I've waxed lyrical about the eights that I've got at home and I love. I'm gonna get a couple more, you know, I'm gonna expand the range, add to my kegs, because we know they like to multiply. Yeah, they do, they have a um, bit of breeding in the corner. But you know, I'm just, I think there's such a gateway for new people to get into kegging. It's so much easier than bottling beer. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that mobility of being able to then, you know, you could do transfer to transfer from keg to size, depending on, oh, I only want to take four here. You could also take them out of your stainless kegs at home as well. So much opportunity with this range of products. Yeah, I can't wait to have a play around with them. So which ones are you gonna be getting? I think I'm gonna to have to get some fours to go in my eights, but I know eventually that one of these will be coming home with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm similar. I'm definitely getting some of these. You know, I've got a kegerator set up at home with three taps on it, cleaning those taps and the lines can sometimes be a chore because I've got to have an empty keg. And I've also got to then maybe think about, well, I've got to keg this beer. So while I've got cleaner in the keg, I'll clean the lines. You know, I don't really have a regime, which I'm not particularly proud of. So having one of these just as a dedicated vessel for using cleaner, line cleaner, sanitizer to keep my beer lines in check, I think that is an awesome thing. However, one of these for doing some barrel aging or doing some mixed fermentation, which you know is something that I'm keen to start getting into at home. Yeah, I'm into that. Just make sure you measure your kegerator and that it fits in there. I won't need to, because it'll just be sat in the corner, aging, you know, and then I can transfer it into something else. Yeah. Either way, the versatility of this range is fantastic. And if you've got any questions about the range, anything we've not covered in this video, please drop us in the comments below. Let us know what your thoughts are. We will come back to you. And if you'd like to see any content specifically about using any of these, do let us know. All that's left to say, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit the bell for notifications, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.